Did you know that you don't need to be a coding genius to get into Salesforce? This one profile pays decent money and needs little to no coding skills. And yes, there is a huge demand for this profile. I'm talking about Salesforce Quality Assurance Engineers. Hi everyone, welcome back to Salesforce Hulk and I'm Shreya Sharma and in this video I'll explain everything about Salesforce QA and even share a proper learning plan on how you can become a Salesforce QA in just 60 days. So make sure you watch the video till the end and if you still haven't subscribed to the Salesforce Hulk channel, do it right away. Let's get started. First things first, we need to understand the role of a Salesforce QA. To explain, let's imagine a self-driving car project. You're hired to test the car's navigation system. You check if it can recognize road signs, does the car follow the correct routes, does it break when there's an obstacle, and so on. Every time something doesn't work as expected like the car not slowing down at a stop sign, you document the issue, report it to the developers, and retest once the fixes are implemented. Salesforce QA is just like that. They ensure Salesforce applications perform flawlessly just as a self-driving car should navigate perfectly. They meticulously test every feature, functionality and configuration to identify any bugs or glitches that might seem small but could significantly impact how the business uses the tool. Once these issues are fixed, they test it again until the system becomes perfect for the business, delivering the results they need. Now, I hope it is clear to you what Salesforce QAs do. But you must be thinking, why is the demand so high for them? Well, as more people and businesses adopt Salesforce, there is growing need for people who can test the custom applications for these businesses. Companies want smooth, bug-free applications and QAs play a critical role in delivering that reliability. Plus, Salesforce QA is a great career option with opportunities to grow into specialized or leadership roles. So how do you become a Salesforce QA? You'll need a combination of skills. Let me give you a proper day-wise roadmap to learn the skills needed for the job and become a skilled Salesforce QA in just 60 days. Starting from day one to five, Focus on building your foundation. Focus and get deeper understanding on why things work the way they do. Start by learning about quality assurance and its benefits. Then explore the software development lifecycle, SDLC, and software testing lifecycle, SDLC. These frameworks guide how we build and test software. Then understand about verification and validation. These are key concepts in QA. Verification checks whether the software meets specifications and design documents during development. While validation ensures the product fulfills the intended use and high-level requirements. Then, understand about verification and validation. These are key concepts in QA. Verification checks whether the software meets specifications and design documents during development. While validation ensures the product fulfills the intended use and high-level requirements. After that, learn about authorization and authentication. This is about managing access to our systems and verifying user identities. Now moving on from day 6 to day 10, it's time to dive deeper into testing. Explore different testing types such as unit testing where you test individual components of an application. For example, does the car sensor correctly detect objects? Integration testing is where you check if multiple systems work together or not. Like whether the car's sensors and braking systems communicate properly. System testing is done for the entire application, similar to checking the car's ability to navigate end-to-end -end routes as expected. And acceptance testing as a verifying step of the product. Besides these, there are some more important testing approaches which you must know about. Black box testing to be done without knowledge of internal working such as the code or workflows. Suppose you are only observing if the self-driving car stops at the red light or not. Whereas in white box testing, you will inspect the code logic behind the car's braking system. There's also gray box testing, which is a mix of both white box and black box testing methods. Exactly like the color gray. Now from day 11 to 20, it is time to level up and master functional and non-functional testing. What are they? Let me tell you. Functional testing basically checks what the software of your application does. To relate it with our car example, it would be like testing how the navigation system does route mapping, which is its primary function. Non-functional testing, on the other hand, checks performance, for example, how quickly the car responds to your commands. In addition to these, you also need to learn about API testing for backend services, performance testing for speed and reliability, security testing for data protection. This phase will give you a comprehensive understanding on how to test different aspects of software applications. Next, from day 21 to 30, 
it's time to focus on documentation. A major part of the job is to make sure everything is documented and for this, there are different kinds of documents that you must maintain. These are test plans, test strategies, test case sheets, bug sheets, test reports, and RTM, which stands for Requirements Traceability Matrix. Once you have an understanding of these, you should choose an application and start creating test cases for it. Aim to find and document any bugs present. Now, from day 31 to 40, you need to focus on defect management. Let me tell you what defects, bugs, and issues are in the software. When there is a problem in the software where the actual behavior deviates from the expected behavior, it is called a defect. A bug is simply another name for a defect, commonly used by developers and testers. It refers to coding errors or mistakes that cause the software to behave incorrectly. An issue is a broader term encompassing any problem or challenge in the software that affects its performance, usability, or functionality. Issues can arise from defects, bugs, user experience problems, or external factors. In these 10 days, you'll have to focus on learning about the bug life cycle, which is the process defects go through from discovery to fixing. After that, you need to get familiar with terms like bug triage, bug leakage, and bug release. Then from day 41 to 45, you'll learn about the roles and responsibilities of a tester and familiarize yourself with project management tools like Jira and Zoho. Like I said before, the opportunities to grow are endless. Once you have gained some experience in manual testing, you can move to automation, which is a huge hit nowadays. And it would be like a cherry on top for your resume. But automation testing isn't usually expected from freshers. It's better to start learning and using it once you've started your job as a Salesforce QA. Focusing on it as a fresher can take up a lot of your time and delay your job search. So it's better to upskill while you're on the job and gradually progress to become a Salesforce QA team lead. Now that you know the path to success and the foundations of a QA engineer, here's what to do in the next 15 days to specialize as a Salesforce QA. So from day 45 to 60, you need to dive into the basics of Salesforce admin. This includes understanding how to manage Salesforce applications, user interfaces, and data models. The best way is to pick an app on the Salesforce platform and start writing test cases for it. This hands-on experience will help you apply your testing skills in a Salesforce domain or environment. You can also choose to specialize in specific Salesforce clouds like the Sales Cloud or Service Cloud to become a specialized expert. That was all on the roadmap to become a Salesforce QA in just 60 days. But wait, wait, wait. I have one last bonus tip for you guys. Certifications. Salesforce certifications can boost your profile and add credibility. So make sure you earn the relevant certifications like the Salesforce Admin or App Builder 1 because we right now do not have anything specific for Salesforce QAs. Uh, but this Admin and App Builder 1 is going to be beneficial for the Salesforce QAs. I hope you have clarity in how to get started now. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like, share and subscribe to Salesforce Hulk for more. Let me know in the comments what you would like to know about next and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.